Good day everyone, especially to our professor, Mrs. Carla Joy Torre Palaris. We are the ninth group and we are going to report the topic, Teacher Leadership and Student-Teacher's Reflection of Practice Teaching. Together with its sub-topic that we're going to discuss, together with my group members, entitled first, the reflection on the students, second subtopic, the teacher's reflection of practice teaching, third, working with children, fourth, working with the cooperating teacher, and lastly, working with school officials and other teachers. The first topic that we were going to discuss was entitled reflections on the students. For teachers, it is important to continually update and expand their professional knowledge base and to improve or revise their practices so as to meet the learning needs of their increasingly diverse students. Reflective practice attitudes and attributes. Attitudes towards your students. Dewey was the first to describe the three attributes that form the basis of reflective practice, namely, first, the open-mindedness, a willingness to consider new evidence as it occurs and to admit the possibility of error. It involves being open to other points of view, appreciating that there are many ways of looking at a particular situation or event and staying open to changing one's own viewpoint. The next one is the responsibility. The careful consideration of the consequences of one's actions, especially as they affect students. It is the willingness to acknowledge that whatever one chooses to do, for example, decision about curriculum, instruction, assessment, organization, or management, will create impact on the lives of students in both foreseen and unforeseen ways. The last one is the wholeheartedness, a commitment to seek every opportunity to learn and a belief that one can always learn something new. Hi everyone, I am Sheila Anas Estevez. Now I will continue the discussion for our first sub topic, which is the reflection on the student. Reflective practice provides a means for teachers to improve their practice to effectively meet the learning needs of their students. So now let me give you some advantage of reflective practice on the student. Advantage of reflective practice of practice teaching on the student. Reflection on the student how teachers to take informed action that can be justified and explained to the, to the students and that can be used to guide further action on them. Next, I help teachers to become aware of their underlying beliefs and assumptions of their students about learning. The other one is to help teachers to promote a positive learning environment this will benefit to the students while they are learning and developing their behavior. Last thing is that how teachers locate their teaching in the broader institutional, social, and political context and to appreciate that many factors influence the students' learning. Teachers' reflection of practice teaching. When teaching reflectively instructor, think critically about the teaching and look for evidence of effective teaching. For example, reflection teaching may include self-assessment, classroom observation, consideration of student evaluation, or exploration of education. Because, because each semester is student and the needs to different reflective teaching is the continual practice that support effective and student-centered teaching. The effects of reflective teaching in school. Developing a culture of reflective practice 
improves school by creating a strong foundation from continuously improving teaching and learning. For example, reflective teachers are more likely to develop reflective learners. If teachers practice reflection, they can more effectively encourage learners to reflect on, analyze, evaluate, and improve their own learning. And these are our key skills in developing them, them to become independent learners. The advantage of reflective practice teaching. Reflective practice provides a means for teachers to improve their practice to effectively meet the learning needs of their student. There are two explanations. Number one, it helps teachers to improve action that can be justified and explain to other and that can be used to guide further action. Next is it helps teachers to more to positive learner environment. Hi, I am Rose and Montes and I will go in to discuss the topic working with children. Students are a consumer of facts. They are active creators of knowledge. Schools aren't just brick and mortar structures. They are centers of lifelong learning. And most important, teaching is recognized as one of the most challenging and respected career choices absolutely vital to the social, cultural, and economic health of our nation. So, what is the role of teacher in child development? Teaching young children requires that teachers function in a variety of roles to meet the educational needs of their classroom children. A major function of decision making, they make decisions to organize instruction, manage learning, and plan instructional strategies to design their early childhood curriculum. Their job is to counsel students as they grow and mature, helping them integrate their social, emotional, and intellectual growth. So, the union of these sometimes separate by mentioned skills, the abilities to seek, understand, and the use of knowledge to make better decisions in their personal lives and to value contributing to the society. So, what is the role of a teacher in guiding and supporting students in the growth of their moral development? The teachers teach students the moral values and behaviors and the act as a role model for showing students the desirable characters and the traits in the school and also to their society. They also teach students to respect the rights of the other person and to teach them about the acceptance of responsibility for one's action. So, what role do teachers play in children's lives? Teachers provide knowledge and education. They supply them with essential information, introduce new ideas and topics, and try to expand their interest by teaching them how to read and introducing them to a treasured trove of literature, they help your child expand their perspective and enrich their ideas. How do children learn differently than adults? So children are more open and less analytic. They are also eager to learn and they have short attention spans. They are need practical active teaching and more concrete, not as able to think an abstract or general term. So these are the six important points to be a good teacher with your children. First, 
positive motivation. It creates interest, enthusiasm, remove fear, and inhibition. Second, effective body language, gestures, body movements with verbal skills. Third, sense of humor. Do not confuse all dirty jokes with humor. Next, understand the students. Prefer a dialogue instead of a monologue. Listen to students' opinions sometimes. Next, teamwork. It helps in mutual understanding between students as well as the teachers. And lastly, technical skills were up to date with the latest techno tools for teaching. And here are the three characteristics of effective teachers. First, they are extremely good classroom managers, of course. Second, they know how to teach a lesson for students learning and mastery. Third, they have positive expectations for student success. Teachers who are effective produce student learning growth and achievement. Learning, acquiring basic knowledge and skills, growth, showing acquired progress over time, and achievement demonstrating an act of accomplishment or attainment. Ten main strategies to connect with children. First, two teachers are strong communicators. When it comes to effective learning, strong communication skills are a must. Second, good teachers listen well. Teachers that are skilled in listening and observing often topics on what isn't being said, such as any anxieties a student may have, so they can help them, the students, to build skills and confidence levels. Good teachers focus on collaboration. Working in education means you are never truly working alone. From paraprofessionals, and teaching assistants to other classroom teachers and school leaders. Working as a teacher often means working effectively in a group. It's also important to keep an open mind and learn from other educators. Fourth, good teachers are adaptable. Effective teachers seem to be able to work in a constantly evolving environment and adjust their teaching methods based on the age of their students, the resources available changing curriculum, practices, and requirements. Fifth, good teachers are engaging. Being able to engage students with humor, creative lessons, and a strong classroom presence is an important part of what makes someone a good teacher. If you were to envision the teachers that you would want in your life, even now, you are going to want someone who is very engaging in front of the classroom. Six, good teachers show empathy. Another key to engaging students and improving their learning is to treat each student as an individual. By being empathetic, and understand what may be going in their life. Seven, of course, good teachers have patience. Whether you are managing classroom behavior, working with colleagues with different views, or communicating students' issues or progress with a parent, patience is one of the most important skills to practice as a teacher. Eight, good teachers value real world learning. Teachers who bring their students' learning into the real world are often some of the most engaging. But it's important for teachers to bring their own learning into the real world too. One of the best preparations for effective teaching is to ensure that education students get plenty of classroom experience early on in their degree program. Good teachers share best practices. 
A willingness to share knowledge and experience with others is one of the most important qualities of a good teacher. Education is a hands-on field and often requires experimentation within the classroom to discover which methods of communicating students works best. Part of being an effective teacher is sharing your findings and best practices others in the field. Lastly, good teachers are lifelong learners. One of the key skills needed to be a good teacher is a dedication to continued education and a love learning. Whether you are learning more about your subject area, learning new methods of communication, or even exploring how to bring more technology in your classroom, continuing to expand your own knowledge is keep expanding that of your school. That's all things. Good day everyone, I am Rosa D. Dillian, one of the reporters in this video presentation. Now, I will going to discuss to you my topic is all about working with a cooperating teacher. Your cooperating teacher is one of the people who will greatly influence the nature and impact of your practice teaching experience. He or she will support you in a number of ways during your teaching practice as a guide and mentor, as a critical friend, as ex as model teacher, as evaluator, as counselor, and as research person, so developing a positive working relationship with your cooperating teacher will make your practice teaching experience both fruitful and positive. When you start your practice teaching, many of the crucial decisions involved in planning and teaching your lesson may be made principally by your cooperating teacher, but as you gain experience and confidence, you will gradually assume greater responsibility for all aspects of your teaching. Often, your practice teaching experience will begin with observation of the cooperating teacher's class, and later, you will take over different areas of responsibility of teaching. During practice teaching, you are likely to be involved in a different kind of experience from those you had during your campus program. The latter will most likely have focused on an academic or theoretical understanding of teaching and language learning, drawing on academic research and theories. But your practice teaching will focus more on the practical experience of teaching and your cooperating teacher may feel that this is more crucial to your professional development done your academic studies. This may pose a dilemma for you at times since you may receive different kinds of message from what you were taught during your campus or training center program and from your teaching practice experience. Okay, what is the role of the cooperating teacher? The basic role of cooperating teacher is to supervise model, guide, and evaluate teacher candidates in order to assist with the development of their teaching skills. The candidate is in a novice in the field of teaching and should be assessed with that in mind. Ang role daw ng cooperative teaching ay ang nagtutulong ang guro ng may karanasang profesional at may kakayahan sa kanilang lugar na pagtuturo ng may pangako sa kanilang mag-aaral at pag-aaral sa pangkalatan. Dito, tinutukoy, tinutukoy nila yung mga pangamba, alalahanin at kagalakan na mararanasan ng isang mag-aaral at guro na nagbibigay naman ng panghikayat at o feedback sa rin. Good day everyone! I am Sheila Anis Estevez, one of the reporter in this video presentation. Now, I am going to discuss to you my topic which is all about working with school officials and other teachers. Teachers and school officials or administrators are more interested and pay attention in collaboration. Teachers' leadership by doing practice teaching believe that working with 
is not just their function as a teacher, but also creating a good relationship towards other people in the school institution have a positive impact on each other and contribute naturally to the school improvement and student development. First is the working together in teams. If teachers and school officials and other teachers work in a team, they can delegate tasks according to the personality and expertise of each team member. This type of teamwork contributes to a greater sense of trust and accountability, and it allows teachers to feel confident about contributing most of their dynamic skills towards the school and The next one is sharing responsibilities. The term shared responsibility means devising ways to work together to support the outcome of children learning and a quality care. Meaning to say, school officials or administrators and the teachers come together to work towards common goals. They are both responsible in shaping the students as they have a shared responsibility for students' learning and achievement. We also have you in charge. We you know a trusting relationship between school officials or administrators and teachers is a crucial component of the educational process. A school climate without trust is a healthy climate and ultimately affects the students' opportunities to grow. So as a teacher, it is our responsibility to build a trustworthy personality, not just for the students, but most importantly, to the school official or administrators and other teachers because a healthy professional relationship between all parties to create a well-managed school institution and staff that will surely provide a benefit to the students for them to grow and thrive more. Okay, last but not least is it provides feedback. Feedback allows for many positive opportunities. Working with a school official or other teacher will provide a feedback wherein a teacher can have a recommendation or suggestion for development, learning strategies, being more competent and effective. You know, feedback is a part of being in a practice teaching or a part of teacher training or for leadership. A feedback is not meant to make us feel that we are wrong or did not do a great job, but it is more likely to uh, an opportunity for clarification of what is expected. Actually, with the help of feedback, it will take away our frustration in thinking if we are able to be an effective educator or not. If yes, it will be a great achievement. But if not, then we we must not find that or suffer to be this view. Take this as an opportunity to develop and to strive for more, and then there will be no doubt choosing the field of that will be all of our major report and presentation. We hope that each of our team members provides you an information, ideas, and understanding of our overall topic and of each sub-topic.